So we get second half here. And this is the stuff, like, nobody talks about this play. You need Hunt and Hammer tackling system. Like, happy to sell it to you guys. This is what lost you the game. You got Debo Samuel, who just runs a hitch. There's nobody even blocking for him. All you got to do is make a tackle. And he ends up getting a first down or darn near it. And it's those plays over and over and over that cost people games. It's just that hidden yardage that nobody wants to discuss. I just put this play in here. I mean, what a ridiculous – like, it breaks every rule that you're supposed to follow, but what a great throw and catch, man. That was real special. Critical sequence here. So you got third and four, and everyone's talking about, all oh, the lines only ran it eight times in the second half. Well, you know, play clock the, – the time of possession changed, right? They had a couple big plays in the run game. They also had some ones they got stoned on first down. So things change during the course of the game. It's not as easy as everybody thinks. By the way – these teams adjust at halftime. You know, the San Francisco 49ers are going to adjust their, their play at halftime. Like they're going to be a little bit better. Here's something that happens, though. It's third and four. So you think they're running for first down. They've had so much success. Fred Warner absolutely hammers running back here. I mean, he just, like, ends his day. Okay, they did this a couple times at Green Bay yesterday. Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw are the real deal. So now it's fourth and two. They make their first decision to go for it. Completely on brand. Absolutely the right call. And Bosa does a Bosa thing. And just, you know, usually with Bosa, he lines up. Let me go back here. So Bosa's in his left-handed stance, left foot back, okay? So he's on the left tackle. So it's he's going to do a uh, first steps left left foot, right? And so he's got right now, if his second step isn't inside, he's going high. So if on his second step, if he doesn't go inside, he's going high now. The tackle has to know that because what that means is he's not going to attack you now to his fourth step. One, two, three, four. On that fourth step, you can keep kicking and push out. He does a great job of, of doing the double swipe rip underneath, right? But really, Decker's sitting on something that's not going to happen. This is why you watch Phil, because on his fourth step, when his left foot, left hand's down, if he's not on his second, he's going to be on his fourth. As far as attacking, it, he's going upfield, he's going to try to run the corner. Gets him to step up. Doesn't really matter. Still has a play to be made. We just have a drop pass. Now, this is the difference in having Debo Samuel. Obviously, there's some things he does with the ball. Here's the difference between having Debo Samuel and not having Debo Samuel. The Detroit Lions are focused on Debo right here. So the safety that you see at the yellow at the yellow line on the 45-yard line, they're playing like a cover three, but he's going to sit on Debo. So as they air this ball out, he's been sitting on, on, on this and, and turned this into a man-to-man, -man, a one-on-one -on -one throw. So what usually is the rule for these quarterbacks when they've got their number one receiver, Brandon Ayuk, versus anybody, hey, if he's even, I'm throwing it. Right. If it's close, I'm going to throw. I'm going to give him a shot, to, a chance to make the play. If that safety is bit on the dig route, the deep dig by Debo. Well, let's let it rip and see what happens. In you know, series of unfortunate events here for the Lions, hits him in the face mask, get down to the one yard line, and then they just run. I show you the routes here. So they're going to run a little shake right here on the on the top on the bottom here with Ayuk. They clear out. Going across the field, they run McCaffrey out to the flat to bring Jack, uh, I think that's Campbell, the middle linebacker, out to chase him. And really, they're just going to focus on the safety. Purdy's got to beat the safety here. He's got eyes on two guys, so he's going to see the, the, the receiver cross his face. And then I kind of disappears here a little bit with a shake and comes, at, comes up high side. On the outside leverage corner, shake, and then back up. And then all he has to beat him right here. So if the safety's in the middle of the field because he's been looking at that, that man crossing his face, Plays over. Purdy's got plenty of arm there to get rid of the football. Again, these designs are not, I don't think they're new to the NFL. It's just, it's it's always interesting to figure out, um, you know, the game between what you think they're going to be playing and the call and the adjustments that you have and then what they actually show up in when it works. Beautiful. So this play is doomed from the start, and I'll show this from two different angles. The most important one is this, though. Basics. You're taking the handoff with the wrong arm up. 
I mean, you're going to – right now, you're screwed. I mean, this is high school one-on-one. I don't know what happened here. If Goff opens the wrong way, Jamar Gibbs is probably the one that – you're guessing the, the, the rookie is the one making the mistake. Watch Fred Warner here with Panay Sewell, by the way. That's rough. But Gibson comes in and makes a fantastic play on the football. Again, doomed from the start just the way he took the handoff. We'll show this from the other angle. And this happened a couple times in this game. You have some, you have some receivers with the Detroit Lions who take a lot of pride uh, in, in blocking, whether it's obviously Amaral St. Brown. Here, this is Josh Reynolds, Jameson Williams. Reynolds misses this. He doesn't do a good job of getting down through this block because he has to fight through the safety. And instead of just, you know, this is what we call a car crash, right? You just want to, you rip through the outside guy and you just make a hard left turn and you just put your head down and you go helmet uh, play side and hit the guy as hard as you can. And it's just a car accident. It's okay. It's not going to be a pretty block. But you're not breaking down. You're just having a – let's have a car accident right here and just see what happens, all right? He tries to break down and make the play. 31 comes in, knocks the ball loose. Obviously, they score on this drive here with McCaffrey coming through. And all of a sudden, you get yourself a football game. And this is what happens when you got a, you got a team versus a really, really talented guys. Now, to the, to the group that says, well, wait a second. The Detroit Lions you know, didn't run the football enough. So now we showed the third and four, okay? They get absolutely stonewalled by, by uh, Wagner. Now it's first and 10. Let's reset. It's 24-24, third quarter, ton of time left in the game. We've been dominating the ball. Let's run reset. Well, left guard gets blown off the line of scrimmage. Uh, Chase Young kind of swims over the, the backside tight ends block. Ends up making the play for no gain. So you got second and 10. Second and 10 comes in. And this is, again, this is another critical sequence. So safety comes down, and they're just kind of robbing this play and hits the porter right as he catches this football, knocks it out. Gibson had a, a couple plays like this, you know, in the second half where you just, I mean, the big hit, obviously, for the tackle. This is the very, very next series. These are huge plays in the game. So now you got third and 10. And let me go back and show you guys the routes combinations here. Again, we're using clip draw here for the first time, so I'm doing my best. But what we're really trying to focus on is the two guys in the blue cone. We're isolating, so we run the go up top. We're going to run the crosser, and then we're going to and then we're going to run the shallow cross underneath it, but it takes a little bit longer, right? So it's like it's two levels, and it's also two different times that these guys are dragging across the middle of the field. But we have the free release. I think that's this is Reynolds in the blue. And it's just a situation where third and 10, Goff makes the throw, got to make the catch. So we've seen a couple drops already even on this drive. I need to reread his draft profile. We saw the Lamar Jackson kind of Houdini moves that, that were in the first game where he's trying to win, win the game for his team on some free rushers coming through trying to go high. This is the difference between not being able to go low on these quarterbacks, right? You go low on this quarterback, game's over, but you go high. And, and you know, let's not get it mixed up here. McCaffrey gets flat out beat on this play. And this stuff happens. But, you know, your court, you whiff on him. Your quarterback's got to make you look good here. And then just throws a great pass. I think this is Kittle on the sideline. I mean, on so many levels, that's a special play. Not a lot of guys in the NFL are making that play just from a balance and elusive, uh, like the ability to be elusive standpoint. I, I just, again, it's so perplexing sometimes when you see, and listen, like Tom Brady was drafted late. There's there's some guys that just you miss on, right? Um, and sometimes it just happens enough where you go, man, I don't maybe we need to rethink how we're drafting these guys. So we got under center. They're gonna run like the old kick play, but they're doing it out of a bunch formation, which I think is genius, right? So usually when you see this with two tight ends on the side, but when I say kick, they're gonna kind of wash everybody down. And they want to put McCaffrey on the outside corner, and they're going, 
McCaffrey's going to at least get five yards. He's going to run through that arm tackle. Maybe there's a big play available here. When that guy has to come down and play inside or outside in leverage, it kind of opens that corridor for McCaffrey to run. They do it out of a bunch look, and so it's almost like the the tight end starts. They've got Yushik come in and clean up on the linebacker, and then the receiver is just kind of playing piggyback, and you can make sure there's no leakage. So they have you see the surge on the on the top of the screen here as far as the line, and he just puts his foot in the ground. Really, he's got this one guy to beat and run through. Corner doesn't really even give him any looks, so the safety's got to come down and make the play, talking about Kirby Joseph. Corner doesn't want any part of that action, and that's why they run the kick play. But great formation to run it out of. You don't see that too often. So you see here, Purdy's initial flat, Ancelotti's got him. And so now, because they see he feels the looper coming up, he sees the hole, and again, there's a difference between, you know, having pocket presence, um, being good at a 40, and then, like, being able to weave through this traffic at the – kind of at the level he's playing right now. I mean, this is – that's not just the, the most um, simplistic route to a first down. So they end up getting a field goal there. Critical sequence alert here, guys. So – they get the run on the first down. They run the toss crack. They get the lineman out convoy. And that's really been kind of the, maybe the best play they had as far as uh, uh, what they're going to do schematically. We saw it last week with the, the 49ers defensive ends. It was actually much easier to crack block them with wide receivers than everybody thought it might be given the, given their kind of their status in the National Football League because their long stances they want to get upfield. Detroit Lions took a page from that book and, and definitely was were very successful with the crack blocks using wide receivers. So they get down, huge play here. So first down, and then we go into the fourth quarter, they're down three again, and we run the flea flicker. Okay, and a lot of people are going, and I'm kind of one of them, I would rather you just get another first down run here. I You understand it, though. With ben, Ben's been so successful, and they, he's called these you know such great plays, and to be fair, this play hit. He just dropped the ball. But not the conservative me, but the lineman in me goes, you know, we're the best, like the best unit on this football team is this offensive line. And David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs, like that combination, that's that's the best thing we got going. Especially against the, the Niners defense. Like that's the Niners defense is susceptible, especially in nickel, to being run on. So that's what I want to – you want to attack. And so we go flea flicker here. And, you know, to be fair, this play is – I mean, you're this close from this thing hitting, and it's 31-27. But now they go and they have to make another decision, fourth and three, and they run a, a, a TE stunt. One, and then you see Eric Thompson is going to come around, so they do a great job of picking the center here. So Frank Red – you got to remember, Jonah Jackson's out of the game, left guard, okay? So what does that mean? That means that Frank Ragnow, the center, is usually expecting a, a really strong kind of punch down on this game. He turns a little bit too much, but we don't really get a good punch down. You see that the left guard here is already kind of body shifted to his right, so he doesn't have power to, to stop that, that, uh, that rush from 98. Armstead comes around, and now you got Goff on the move. If, you're, if Goff's moving uh, east and west, he's no good to you. This isn't what he excels at at all. He really has no play to be made there, to be fair. But you get him off the spot. I mean, that's always – if you feet, if his feet are set, he's one of the best guys at delivering the football. If his feet aren't set, you got a problem. And so what we have now is we got matchup city. So we got man coverage across the board. you got two guys in the backfield. We went motion. And that really means that Ancelotti's, or excuse me, Jack Campbell's covered up on Brock Purdy, who he's not spying here, but he's kind of spying. But we know that Purdy's a limited athlete. Now, this is interesting only because this is one of the few, this is, you know, later in the game, they have to make some uh, adjustments on defense because Purdy has been scrambling. So they, okay, we're going to rush four. Let's make sure. That quarterback doesn't scramble for the first down. 
Hutchinson, again, watch 97. He's bull rushing the right tackle. He's creating the pressure, and he's collapsing the pocket. And somehow he doesn't make the play here. Purdy makes the play, gets past him, and now runs around. I think that was Ancelotti, not Campbell. That's me. Ancelotti, for, on the way to, this is his game for the, the, the day. What was his, what, was, what did I say his long game was? 21 yards, and it sets up this next big run by McCaffrey. You look down at the bottom, and you have this two tight end look. And now instead of running the kick where we're collapsing everything down, we're going to run this double. And this is something that, you know, if you're a Packers fan, you've been kind of looking at how that team got a little bit better. I think these tight ends, now Kittle can block anybody, but now you've got a tight end and a wing tipped off and they're allowed to combo slip, whatever you want, you guys want to call this scoop this, but you get, you get four hands on the down defensive end. You take care of him and you're going up to a corner outside leverage play guy who's going to play soft anyways. So it gives the, the tight ends a lot of time to secure that first man on the line of scrimmage. It also gives the opportunity for the tackle and the guard on that side to take care of that three technique up to that linebacker. You see the linebacker fires his gun. And this is really just all about angles of pursuit. Safety's got to make a choice here. Right now, he thinks the corner's going to have outside leverage, which he does. But he takes the wrong angle of pursuit. When you fire your gun sometimes and you try to run underneath a McCaffrey type, right? If McCaffrey doesn't have to cut back now, you're out of luck. So McCaffrey has one of his another missed tackle. One of the better runs of the day ends up, I think, hurting himself right there. But it leads to a 31-24, uh, a 34-24 game, which, quite frankly, I was happy with because I had made some bets when it was a nine and a half point spread, and they go down, make the decision to run on third, call the timeout get the fourth down touchdown, blow the spread up, onside kick, Kittle recovers, game over. Long story short, uh, Niners win the game. I lose my bets. All is not lost, though. 